We're going to talk for, for just a moment uh, today about life and about how I think a lot of us feel this way. I kind of use this with the kids up here today. The number of people we have in this world, and sometimes, listen, even in this room today with a pretty small crowd as far as like, you know, relatively speaking to people in this town and everything else, I think a lot of us fight this feeling a lot of times, and it's our title for today, and it's this right here, I just feel so insignificant. I just feel like I don't matter. Life just, I mean, there's just not out, there's not much out there. We're going to look in Acts chapter 17 at the very beginning of the sermon today, Ecclesiastes 1, and in Matthew as well, the words of Jesus, to find some significance. But I want you to understand something. We're going to, we're going to talk for just a moment today about some of the things that the early Christians had to deal with. And understand this, if we fight this today, they fought it back then as well because their lives were not nearly as glamorous as our lives are today. They just had a lot more struggle in their everyday life than we did. They, first off, they lived under occupation of a foreign power. They didn't have near the freedom that we have today in our country. All right, they lived under the Roman Empire, but but we are the Roman Empire. We see that through Scripture, though, in the Book of Acts, that they loved each other, that they shared the things that they had. They were telling people about Jesus, and literally, we see this in Scripture that they turned the world upside down. And we're going to read this story and this is a couple of verses right here about a couple of guys named Paul and Silas and what they were doing with the gospel and how it was affecting their world around them. The Bible tells us this in Acts 17, uh, the last part of verse 6 and verse 7. It says, These men who have turned the world upside down have come here also, and Jason has received them, and they are all acting against the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, Jesus. They didn't worship the king of the day. They didn't, they didn't put a lot of uh, importance necessarily on who was in power over them here on the earth. They cared more about their true king, Jesus. And I under, listen, Oh, my goodness. Week to week, day to day, y'all know that this world, uh, uh, listen, it doesn't matter who's in the White House. It just doesn't. Our king is Jesus. Our king is Jesus. And like, we're going to affect our world much more, much, much more by following him and by listening to his words as opposed to, and I'm not telling y'all to go lynch the government or anything like that or be anti-government. I'm not t- like we're according to scripture. We're to live under the authority of our government, and we have so many freedoms here, and we have so many things going for us here in this world. But our King is Jesus, and 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 actually, when we look in scripture, and I don't have it up there, Cheryl, but in Luke chapter 12, Jesus says this: that to whom much is given, much is expected, and we have been given a great blessing and a great opportunity with the life that we've had that we have here now to bring glory to him through what we do and and if we think about that in the in the the christians of the bible they never really had anything to get excited about in life like not much they didn't have a great life they had they had a lot of struggles all right but think about all of our possibilities and all the things that god has laid out for us in this day and age and the things that we have going for us and so what I want to do today is this, but see, with, still with all of that, with all of that, we still struggle to find significance in the world. We still struggle uh, to, to really, listen, to, to define what we think is success. If I went around the room and I asked all of you if you would define your life as a success, I, most of you would probably, I don't want to say say no but you wouldn't like just overtly answer oh yes i'm very successful because we we tend to think we tend to view success the way that the world views success sometimes and so here's what i want you to do and i'm gonna give everybody a few minutes uh, just uh, not a few minutes 30 seconds you'll see i'm gonna give you 30 seconds in just a second to do this okay i want you if you've got a pen and you're taking notes you can write it down on a piece of paper This is a challenge for you, okay? If you don't have something to write with today, I want you to at least make a mental list. You can use your phone. Get your notepad out on your phone. That's fine. We allow that here in this church. All right? Here's what I want you to do. I want you to to write down some words. Just that They they don't have to be like these big in-depth thoughts. Words in your life that, that would describe success for you. 
and don't be all churchy. Be, be honest. <laughs> I don't know what that says about us. Um, the first things that really come to your mind about like what, what, would, what would give my life significance, what would give my life success, you have 30 seconds once this video starts to do it. Go ahead, Cheryl. It doesn't have to be in the form of a question. Please put your pants down. No. <laughs> All right, so let's think about this for a minute. What are some things that you wrote down or that you thought about or that you put in your phone that would define success? I'm going to give you a list of, of five things that I came up with. Now, yours may look different, but I would bet that you have at least one of these somewhere on your list, some words that you would describe as uh, being success or have a life of significance for you. All right, here's one right here. Let's go ahead, Cheryl. Money. Yes, somebody's like, I got that on my list, all right? We want money. Listen, maybe it's a big thing for you, maybe because you struggle to make ends meet. We've all been down that road, all right? Maybe this one's on, on your list is a life of significance right here, family. You're like, hey, you know what? <laughs> like, I just want some sense of normalcy in my life. I would love to have just a good, healthy family I would love to, I'd love to, I'd love for my kids one day to give me grandchildren. I'm just, pr like, my prayer is that I just live long enough for that because I was a little older as a dad that, like, you know, if not, I've given my, like, my girls have permission to date when I'm dead. That's, that's the way, I don't know. I'm just thinking about, I don't know. But anyway, so we want some stability in our family. So maybe money, family, here's a third one that might be on your list, health. I want to have a healthy life. I want to take care of myself. I, I would do anything to be in better shape, to lose a few pounds, you know, to do this, and, and, and to be a little more healthy. Maybe, I, I'm sure this one's up here for most people, all right, your career. I want to have, I just want to be happy at what I do. I want to, I, you know, I want to find some joy in the things that I do. I, I don't want to wake up every morning and dread going to work. We talked about that last week. Maybe how you can change that mindset, but maybe you want uh, a career that might bring you some fulfillment. And then lastly, here's something that you want to have in people's lives or that you want an influence, right? You want to leave a legacy that would be success to you. You, uh, you want to, to matter. And I, what I did was I kind of just, these were just random when I wrote these down and I made the slideshow. But I, but I thought for a little bit and I prayed, and I, I don't have this slide up here, Cheryl, but I thought like if I could put these five in order for me, really what it would be, and, and honestly, at the, like my list was family, number one, and then health, because I got to be health, I, I got to, you know, I, like I said, I, I'm an older daddy, so I want to I take care of myself as my girls grow up, and, and my wife, and all that, and then I put career third, money fourth, and influence fifth, so I, I, I kind of looked at that, and had to really give an honest assessment of what I thought there, and, and, and that would be my list, and I don't think it matters who you are, today in here. I, I think that, listen, whether you're a Christian or whether you're struggling with your faith, maybe somebody just brought you and you're new today and you're just kind of checking out church and you don't know what all these people that follow Jesus are all about. I, I think this next statement, no matter where you stand, would be true for all of us. I think everybody wants this right here. Like, no matter what's on your list, here's what you want. Number one is this. You just want your life to matter. I just want to feel important. I just want to, ha I, I want to feel like I'm significant, like I'm making a difference. It's a common thread for humanity, I think, no matter if we're, like, who we follow, if we follow Jesus or not. But I want to, I want to show you a couple of things uh, as far as some of the things that might be on our list. If we're honest about some of the things that might be on our list, I want to show you a, a couple of quotes uh, from some people that you've probably heard of. And I want to show you uh, maybe how we're, we're really investing in the wrong things first this is a quote right here i've got this up here i'm quite miserable because i'm never satisfied with what i've got you're always looking for that next high and that is what i would define as happiness 
And I want you to think about that, and then I want to, in just a second, I'm going to show you who this person is, and then I want to give you some statistics about this person as an individual. It says he's miserable because he's never satisfied with, with what he's got. All right? This is the man who said this right here. Y'all probably seen him before, right? Simon. Simon. He has a net worth of $550 million. He, every year, every year he makes $95 million. That's what his, that's what his income is. And yet he says, I'm never I'm never satisfied with what I've got. See, I knew that I could sit, I, I knew, I, I want to backtrack for a second. I knew if I sat up here and told y'all, hey, listen, money is not what it's all, like everything is cracked up to be, or fame, or all these things. Y'all would all look at me and go, well, yeah, you ain't got it either. <laughs> You're telling us that, but you ain't got it, so why would we listen to you, right? Because we're all in this together. I thought if we, if we saw some people who maybe legitimately had these things in their life, that we might think a little differently about it. But he's worth $550 million, his net worth. Now, here's another quote from another guy that you probably have all seen before. He says this. He said, I think everybody should get rich and famous and do everything they ever dreamed of so they can see that it's not the answer. This I'm going to tell you about this guy. He's, he's a famous actor. We're not going to pull his picture up yet. He's a famous actor, one of my favorites. He owns restaurants. He has a home in Brentwood, that famous place that, that, that OJ made famous. But that, that, that fancy, he did, for real. I mean, like that fancy uh, Beverly Hills neighborhood, right? That's where his main residence is. He also owns a $14 million beach home. He has a Manhattan apartment. He's got his own private jet. And he's got a net worth of $150 million. And this is what he says. He says that everybody should get rich and famous because that's, that's not the answer. Here's a picture of this guy right here, Jim Carrey. <laughs> now, so we see this. Now, this next quote, listen, I want to I'm, 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 I kind of press in here, and I want you to see that this is the way it's always been. This next quote is from a guy who made... Over one billion with a B, with a B, it says one point one billion dollars a year was his income. One point one billion dollars a year was his income, and this is what he said. Check this out: smoke. It's nothing but smoke. There's nothing to anything. It's all smoke. What's there to show for a lifetime of work, a lifetime of working your fingers to the bone? One generation goes its way, the next one arrives, but nothing changes. It's business as usual for old planet Earth. The sun comes up and the sun goes down, then it does it again and again, the same old round. The wind blows south, the wind blows north, around and around and around it blows, blowing this way, then that, the whirling erratic wind. All the rivers flow into the sea, but the sea never fills up. The rivers keep flowing to the same old place and then start all over and do it again. Everything's boring, utterly boring. No one can find any meaning in it. Boring to the eye, boring to the ear. What, what was will be again. What happened will happen again. There's nothing new on this earth. Year after year, it's the same old thing. Does anyone call out, hey, this is new. Don't get excited. It's the same old story. Nobody remembers what happened yesterday and the things that will happen tomorrow. Nobody will remember them either. Don't count on being remembered. Isn't that just a great joyous note right there? All right, that's what he says. One billion dollars per year income. That's what he says. More power, more wealth than any of us can even imagine. All right, I think that's the end of the scripture, isn't it, Cheryl? All right, so... This is what he says. It's all meaningless, right? We've seen Simon Cowell, Jim Carrey. Now check out who quoted that. King Solomon. That's Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verses 2 through 11, as quoted in the message translation. Same thing. Most powerful man on the world, in the world, richest man in the world, he had it all. All right? So when we think about that, y'all are like, well, golly. 
Simon ain't happy. Jim Carrey ain't happy. King Solomon wasn't happy. Like, what, what's, all this, what's all this leading to, all right? And so I think a lot of us say, like, I just want my life to matter. But the second thing that we say sometimes is this, is what am I doing here? If that's the case, then why am I here? What's the significance of even being here? And we're going to look at this story in Scripture for just a couple of minutes today about that Jesus tells us these few verses, and he changes everything about how we should look at things. In, in Matthew chapter 16, in this story, we're going to put, I'm going to try to put it all kind of in context of what's going on and what the disciples must have been thinking during this time. All right, they've been following Jesus for a while, and Jesus, here's this story, uh, uh, or, or he, uh, he has this friend named John the Baptist, I'm sorry, who has been beheaded. He's lost his life, so Jesus goes through that, and, and then he, he feeds 5,000 people, and and, and, and then he leaves there, and he goes across to the other side, and Peter and the disciples come out, and they, they walk on. Like, remember, Peter walks on water for just a second, and Jesus has to save him for a minute, and then Jesus heals this boy that's possessed with a demon, and, and then he, he takes his disciples, and he goes away to this place called Caesarea Philippi, way up on a mountain, kind of an obscure place, and he's going to kind of really kind of, he's going to drop some knowledge on them, but he's also going to ask them some questions, and he's going to reveal a truth to them during this. And, and, and he basically, he's, he says this, to, he asks this question to his disciples. He says, who do they say I am? Who are all the people saying that I am? What do they say about me? Y'all ever ask your friends, like, hey, what, do they like me? <laughs> you, ever ask, you, you know you do. You ask your friends, like, hey, what do they say about me? Did they, were they talking about me? Well, Jesus did that to his disciples. He's like, what do they say about me? And, so, and, and some of the guys say, well, you know, some say that you're maybe, you know, Elijah or you're a prophet, you're Jeremiah. And then he, he, then he presses in on them a little bit further and he says, well, who do you say I am? What do you say about me? And Peter speaks up and he's the one that was kind of brash and he speaks up and he says, you're the Christ, you're the Messiah, you're the chosen one. And it's the first confession of faith in the Bible. And we see that and, and, and Jesus says, hey, that's, you got it right, man. And he said, on that confession, we're going to build this church. And, and look, we're going we're to build the church, and thousands of people are going to come. And for thousands of years, they're going to come on that same belief right there. And, and, and they're going to say, I'm going to fill it full of people that say the same thing. And then he blows their mind because he says, okay, look, if you want to be a part of this, if you want to have some, some, some significance in your life and in the world, then this is what you got to do. And he says this in Matthew 16, 24. He says this, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross, and follow me. He doesn't say, hey, if you want to really be significant, you need to make sure that as soon as you start your next career that you get in on the IRA, you know, like you get your IRA set up and you get your 401k set up and you get all this stuff. Make sure you've got a lot of money for the end of your life. Make sure that you get the greatest career that you can possibly imagine and you invest everything you have in that. He says, this is what you need to do. You got to say no to yourself. Say no to the things that you think are important. And you, first and foremost, you follow me. You deny yourself. And so, when we look at this and we look at Scripture, we're seeing this today that that Jesus says, look, if you want to answer this question of, of how to have a meaningful life, of how to feel significant, of why you are here, like this is what Scripture tells us really clearly is this third point that we've got right here as we break this Scripture down. Number three is this, is that following Jesus leads to a life of significance. That's how we have significance in this world is by denying ourselves and following Jesus. Now, I say this especially to the young people in the room, but also to those of you out here who listen. I, I'm just telling you that there are a lot of people in churches all over this country today, and they're like, yes, I'm a Christian, I believe. But you're miserable. Because you come to church on Sundays, you hear the message, you see what, but you're not surrendering your life to follow Jesus. 
You're not putting him at the forefront of everything that you do. You're not having this, really, this life of significance. You're allowing life to drag you down. And he's saying, look, you got to say no to yourself and follow me. Trust me. The things that you think are important, they're not. In fact, in the next verse in Matthew 16, 25, remember, this is what he said. If you try to hang on to your life, you'll lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. And I want you to think about this and let this kind of sink in a little bit. The harder that you try to save your life, the bigger house that you just keep trying to build, the more money that you keep trying to make, the more stuff you want to accumulate, the more that you put all of your, all your chips in on this area of your life or on this area of your life for you, the more you try to hold on to all these things, the less significant your life is going to be. The more you'll question everything, the more you'll lose hope, the more you'll get discouraged, the more you'll feel lost in this great big world. This is what he's saying right here. He's saying, if, but if you lose your life for my sake, if you'll, do, if you'll follow me, if you'll trust me, if you'll put me first, I mean, I don't even have this in here, but Matthew 6, Scripture says this, seek ye first, the kingdom of God. Amen. Seek him first. Kids, I'm telling y'all this. Adults, I'm telling y'all this. I, I'm, I'm, kind of, I'm really excited. Bobby asked me this morning if I would come in like two or three weeks to celebrate recovery and share my testimony. And a big part of my testimony is this, and I've shared it with you all. I can promise you that those five things that I, that I mentioned up there earlier that I still kind of, they are important, right? Family, money, health, a job, influence, all these things. I've looked in those five places and countless more to find purpose in life. I've looked everywhere you can possibly look, and every road leads to a dead end. There's discouragement to be found there. There's hopelessness to be found there. It's, it's never what God has in store. I finally realized when I surrendered everything and said, Jesus, I'm going to follow you through all of my struggles through all of my difficulties, through all the times that I'm going to fall down, I'm going to keep getting up and I'm going to keep following you and I'm going to put you first in my life and everything I do. There are going to be things that kind of creep in that maybe at times I put above you, but I've got to remember to bring them back down and put you first. I'm going to do this in every area of my life. It happened for me roughly 11 years ago. And when that happened, my life since then has been a slow climb of having more purpose, more meaning, more joy, more abundance, more hope. God has shown me that his word is true and that following Jesus is the only thing in this world that's ever brought me anything. Anything. And if you're out there today and you're continuing to try to find your purpose and your hope in anything, the things that you think are great, You'll never find them apart from Jesus. You just won't. You just won't. If you feel insignificant, it's because you're not following, and I'm not saying that we don't feel that way sometimes. We all get that, but I'm telling you, if your life is defined by feeling insignificant, let me put it that way. If your life is defined by feeling insignificant, my challenge would be, well, are you following Jesus? Are you trusting him? Because the fourth point is this. Number four is that significant is not, significance is not found in the things of this world. Amen. We've seen that. I mean, uh, how many people have, that have those things? Again, y'all can be like, well, you ain't got them either, so how would you know? I've tried. I've tried all those things. And none of them ever gave any significance to my life. The last little verse of Scripture we want to look at here in Matthew 16 is, is, is verse 26. This is what the Bible says. What do you benefit if you gain the whole world, but you lose your soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? And what he's saying is, what, what good is it if you have all these things and you don't have me? You'll never have hope. You'll never have peace. You'll never have in the encouragement that I want to give you. And here's, here's what I know about our life, about our world. I, I don't know much. But I know that everybody in this room, we all have one thing in common. We all get one shot. 
We all get one shot. That's it. All right? We get one shot at this world. We're, we're all, here. your encouraging, optimistic word for the day. We're all going to die unless Jesus comes back. Thanks for that. Yeah, I, it's going to happen. All right? I mean, they, the mortality rate is 100%. Still is. Will be till Jesus comes back. All right? We want significance in this world. Yes, I understand. We find it when we have a little bit, like, we, listen, I understand that a little, a little money, it, it, it ain't bad. Money's not a bad thing. Family's not a bad thing. Having a good career is not a bad thing. All those things are good, but, in their, but like, ultimately, they're not going to bring us the type of long-lasting hope and peace that a relationship with Jesus does. It's got to be about him first. It has to be about him. He's the only thing that brings significance, all right? We all try to find worth in something every day. We have this promise from Jesus. We have a promise from him that if you lose your life for my sake, then you'll find significance. So I would just challenge you today that, and ask yourself, you know, like, when is the last time I really did something for the gospel of Jesus Christ? When is the last time I really did something a little crazy? When is the last time I, I did something that didn't make sense to the world? When's the last time that I was really crazy generous with something for somebody or forgave somebody? Because listen, we know that God did that for us and, and, and he's called us to do that for this world. And so I, want you to, I just want you to wrestle with this today. Like if you feel insignificant, have you really, have you really surrendered to Jesus? You really decided I'm going to follow him in every area of my life. I'm going to trust him in every area of my life and I'm going to trust his promises, and I'm going to follow him, that I can find my life by following him. You can't find life here without following him. You can't find the things you want without following Jesus in this world. You go, That's, that is incredibly narrow-minded for you to say that. You know what Jesus says? We'll only get through the narrow gate. It's not, it's not I'm not trying to be pompous as i say this i'm not trying to look down on people who don't have jesus i say it as a desperate man and it is a desperate plea because i desire that for everyone to know jesus i want people to experience the the joy and the peace and the abundance and the salvation that only comes through him that's why i share this because i see people all the time looking everywhere else for it and they just think, well, if I, don't, if I can't find it here, certainly I can find it in this area, or in this area, or in this area. And we just, we just shift. And we never really just go, all right, God, you know why? It's, it, here's the biggest reason why. It's incredibly difficult to humble ourselves. And man, I'm wrong. I got it wrong. Just buckle those knees and get down and just bow our head and just say, God, I'm giving it all to you. I'm going to trust you with it all. It's, it, 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 it requires a great deal of humility. But I see people every day, listen, that in love, I'll say this, that just waste their lives. And think about all these disciples. The meaning that they found in their life by following Jesus. They had nothing. They were not anything special according to worldly standards and i mean in fact they were just common people like we are but god used them in a crazy way when they decided to surrender and follow jesus they didn't waste their lives and here we are two thousand years later talking about them and so the question that you got to ask yourself today is this because this is what we desire for every one of you this is our desire for every one of you, but you've got, you have to ask yourself this question. Number five is this, is that are you living a life of significance? I mean, that's just, and remember, there's only one way to define that. Are you following Jesus? I could have just put that. Are you following Jesus? What does your life look like? I know my wife told me about this with the youth group a couple of weeks ago. I, was it this, maybe it was this past Wednesday. I don't even know. Does your life look similar outside these doors to, to, to the way it does in here is that is that is that who you are can you say i am a follower of jesus outside these doors just as i am when i come here to worship who are you 
Do you feel insignificant because we all are apart from Jesus? It's not about us. It's all about him. It always has been. It always will be. So I would just simply ask you to challenge yourself today and ask this question. Do I need, is there an area of my life that I, I continue to pursue and pursue and pursue, and yet I feel so insignificant here? What area or areas of my life do I need to surrender to Jesus today? What do I need to just say, I'm going to trust you in it, and I'm going to begin to pursue you first above everything else in this area of my life? Or maybe you go, it is my life. It's my life. It's out of whack. I'm looking at all these things, and I need, I need to put Jesus at the center of all of it to find any significance. I want to make him my Lord and Savior today. This is, yeah, this is one of them messages. This is this the gospel. This is the good news. We want you, I don't care if you're 8 years old or 80 years old, or outside of that, or in between it. I don't care. I want you to know what it means to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and to understand that you'll only find significance in him, never in anything of this world. The reason why, people go, well, how can you say that? Why, how do you know that? I, I just believe this according to God's word, and y'all heard me say this before. You'll never find significance or importance in anything of this world because you were not created for this world. You were created for something better. And it's only found through Jesus. So do you need to come today and surrender your life to him? Is there an area that you need to come surrender? Do you need prayer for strength, for courage, for clarity? Do you need that today? Because we want to do that. Listen, we want to be there for you. God is doing some amazing things through this church because we're just continually trying to humble ourselves and put God at the forefront, Jesus right there with him. And we're just trying to say we want to seek you in everything we do. So we want to love each other and encourage one another and go through this journey together with Jesus. So if you need him today, you're in a perfect place to come and surrender to him because all you're going to get along the way is love and encouragement and prayer and we want to be there for you. Amen.